UAVs are the up-and-coming threat air defense planners are grappling with. These platforms have been largely used in the intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance role until the first decade of the 21st century, where they took on limited strike missions in permissive environments. Firstly, the air defenses of most advanced nations are designed largely to deal with higher-end threats like conventional aircraft and ballistic missiles. Traditional air defense are not particularly well-equipped to deal with modern threats like cruise missiles, drones. I will discuss this video with reference to the recent conflict over the disputed lands of Nagorno-Karabakh between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Although drones are with us for past three decades and since they are widely used in counterinsurgency operations, but it is the first time these are used in a war between two countries with a regular army. The central point being made was that an unprecedented use of drone power by Azerbaijan brought them disproportionate success. Azeri army mainly employed two types of drones. These are the Turkish Barakter TB2 and the Israeli Harap drone. Drones throw four challenges to air defense systems. The first one is that their RCS is generally too small to get detected by conventional air defense radars, either be it early warning, fire control, or missile guidance radars. Second is their altitude male category of UAVs, acronym is medium altitude long endurance drones, are capable of operating between 25,000 to 50,000 feet, and high-end hail drones have capabilities higher than male, with a typical altitude ceiling of 60,000 feet or more. The third challenge is their endurance, these UAVs can stay up in the air from 24 hours to 32 hours, depending upon type of drone. Fourth factor is being extremely low cost, which supports their affordability to countries with limited defense budget and also permits them to be acquired in large numbers. Confirming the above figures TB2 drone has an altitude ceiling of 27,000 feet and an endurance of 27 hours. It can carry a variety of armaments on its four hardpoints, including long-range anti-tank missiles with tandem warheads, having range of up to 8 km, laser-guided munitions with precise accuracy, having range from 8 to 14 km, capable of taking on both stationary and moving targets, and also employs laser-guided rockets. Now coming to air defense systems, these are characterized as point defense like C-RAM close-in weapon system and Ehrlich and Skyranger, short or short-range air defense, medium-range and long-range air defense systems. Mampids or man-portable air defense system like Stinger, Verba and Igla are completely useless against UAVs as their maximum engagement altitude is 12,000 feet. Anti-aircraft guns like 35mm Ehrlichan has an effective firing ceiling of 13,000 feet, both these systems are short-range weapons for target flying at low altitude. With small size and mild engine noise, UAVs are very difficult to spot visually. Medium-range systems that provide area defense by the integration of command station radar unit and firing batteries can shot down UAVs easily, but their sustainability rate is low. These systems can be easily detected by sensors and detection devices on UAVs equipped with ESA radars, such radars are state-of-the-art in technology. These are highly resistant to enemies' jamming efforts, have a low probability of getting intercepted by enemies' sensors. Stationary air defense positions can easily be targets by stealth or low RCS drones like Harrop, as it homes on radiations emitted by enemy radars. Mediums range systems like Tor, Panzer which have capability to move with tank regiments, can effectively engage drones with quick reaction time. Further these systems have thermal imaging sites that enable them to operate in stealth mode, but their improper deployment in an unsuitable environment also results in their destruction in recent conflicts. Although long-range systems like S-300, S-400, US Patriot, and Chinese HQ-9 are capable of engaging UAVs at considerable ranges, but there is no point in killing a few hundred dollars drone with a million dollar missile. This ratio becomes further skewed if the opponent is using swarm drones off which, the best of Sam's worth millions can take out only a few. That is why long-range missile regiments are provided with point defense or short-range air defense batteries, capable of engaging target at a range of 15 kilometers, flying at an altitude of 30,000 feet. Talking about the conflict, the air defense force in Armenia comes under the overall control of Armenian Air Force. Their systems are based on self-propelled guns and surface-to-air missile batteries. Self-propelled guns include the Russian-origin Shulka weapon system. Their missile force consists of Strela 10M, SA-4 Ganif, 9K-33 Osa, Buk M2, upgraded Pechora, 2K-12 Cub, and S-300PM, which is long-range platform. 
Except for Buck M2 and probably OSA, most of the weapon systems are of very old vintage and technology dating back from 60s. None of above mentioned system is designed to be used as an anti-drone weapon. The major problem was that these vintage systems emit high volume of RF waves. These active waves could have been easily picked up by passive sensors of technological advance per actor, as well as hair-up drones. But the results did not prove that in any future conflict UAVs will be as successful as in this situation, because on Armenian side one segment of defense is nearly missing unlike other countries, that is air superiority fighter aircrafts, which usually carry numerous heat-seeking and radar-guided air-to-air missiles payload under their wings. These UAVs are sitting ducks against fighter aircraft, as their pilots practice air-to-air -air weaponry on target drones, having specification equivalent to real ones.